Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we will be creating the Impel and Earth Spike abilities from the Dota 2 universe. After watching this, you can alter the visuals of your ability to better fit your game. I'm going to start by setting up the scene. We will add a plane to our level to act as our ground, then create a new material and give it the default checkered texture that comes with Unity. Assign the material to our plane. Next, we will create the player. Make the camera a child object of the player game object and now we will import a player controller script I have previously created for this tutorial. Link to download will be available in the description down below. This script contains three different modes, first person, third person and top down view for strategy like games. Of course, you don't have to use this script and you can just use your controller. I will go into detail about implementing it into your controller in a second. Create a new particle system. Change the render mode to mesh and for the mesh I will be using a capsule. For the material I duplicate our checkerboard material and lower the tiling so that it looks more like it fits. Now set the render alignment to world. We will lower its duration and lifetime to 1 second and speed to 2 seconds. In the emissions options we will remove the rate over time and give it a burst of 1 particle. In our shape options we will leave it as a cone and lower the angle and radius to the minimum allowed. Then fix its rotation so that it gets shot upwards. Right now it is not coming out of the ground so we need to play with our position values a bit and make it pop up nicely. Cool. Minus 1.5 seems to work fine for me. It is not going down after popping up though, so we will give it a 0.2 gravity and increase the duration and lifetime to 3 as well as the start speed. Two 2.5. I will also increase the simulation speed to 2 so that it is a bit faster. Let's check 3D start size and lower its X and Z values to make it look more pointy and menacing. Cool, now we got a spike looking thing popping up. Name this impale object and then create a new script called impale script. Give the script to our impale object and then open it up using your software of choice. I'm going to be using Microsoft Visual Studio. Here we are in a brand new script. First, we need to set up a few variables. The game object that contains the script, then an integer that will hold the maximum amount of impel game objects we will create. We need a layer mask to choose what ground are we going to be able to hit with our raycast. Now for private variables we need a game object that will be called FX Parent. This will be the first Impel game object we created, then we need an integer variable to keep track on what Impel game object we are currently on in relation to the maximum amount. Now we need a few booleans. One for checking if it, this is the last Impel game object determined by the maximum length and current length then another two to work with the spawn delay and damage delay. We will also need a particle system to check if the particle system has finished playing so we can delete the game object from the game and two floods that will be our delay timers. Okay, so inside our start, we check if this is the first impel game object and if it is, then we set it as the FX parent. Mm -hmm. 
then we need to reference our particle system and set our delays. Alright, inside our update we will begin by checking if the delay timer is smaller or equal to zero and if we have not spawned next. We create a new function called create impale object, then we add it inside our if statement. Now we have to lower the timers, so if the delay timer is bigger than zero, we lower it by delta time. Same with our damage timer. We check if the damage delay timer is smaller or equals to zero as well as our boolean and if this is true then we create a new function called AOE damage. Add this function inside our if statement. Last thing we check inside our update is if our particle system is not playing and this is the last impale object then we destroy the fx parent. Let's go to our create impale object function and begin by checking if this is smaller than the maximum length. If it is then we set it as the last. If it isn't then we continue by creating a variable that will hold the raycast position. This raycast will be created at this transference position forward in one unit times the separation variable we set up in the inspector. Now we need to add the height value to our raycast position.y so that it does not begin on the floor. This way the ability can go up hills. Now we do a raycast using the parameters we have already set and if our raycast hits nothing then this is the last impale game object. We do a quick check if we have hit is not this transform and if it isn't then we store the hit point location as a variable so that we can add our y offset to it. We set our has spawn boolean to true and we create a new impale game object as a child of this transform. We set its position and rotation and we finish it off by accessing the impale script of the game object we just created and setting the variables to avoid creating this game object forever and ever and ever. Back in Unity, you can see that we have all our exposed values right here. We will play around with them in a bit. First, we just need to go to our particle system and uncheck looping so that it destroys itself. Now we will set the layer mask. This is what the raycast will interact with. So our plane in this case has a layer mask set to default. I'm just going to create a new layer mask and call it terrain. Then set our plane layer to terrain. Back in our scripts layer mask, we will assign it accordingly. Now let's set up these variables. I'm going to do something like this. Cool, now we drag our impale object into our project folder uh, to create a prefab and then we assigned our prefab here. Now hit play and let's check it out. That was pretty slow so I'm going to lower the spawn delay a bit. Yeah okay, I like that. It's much better I think. Let's open up our script again and code in our AOE function. First thing we need to do is set the volume to true so that it does not loop. And then we use Unity's physics overlap sphere to get all the units inside a spherical radius. Alright, we need to set the rigid body of the collider that's inside our sphere cast as a variable and do a check. Then we add a force upwards using our force variable we set in the inspector window. I messed up, so up here we will rename this variable to impel heat effects. And down here, where we are creating the next impel game object, we will change this to game object so that it is pretty much duplicating itself. 
Cool, now back in our AOE function, we will create this impale hit effects at the location of our enemy and destroy it after 3 seconds. 3, 3 and a half seconds. Here you will access your enemy script and lower his health. Alright, now to visualize your AOE, we will create a new variable and call it debug. Below our AOE damage function, we will do an onDraw gizmos that will check if the debug is enabled and if we have damaged. Then we set the color to whatever you like and draw a sphere so that we can see the radius in game. Now back in Unity, make sure you have uh, gizmos up here enabled so that we can see our sphere radius. Then we will duplicate our impale object and remove the script then set the 3D start size to something bigger. Drag our impale heat effects into your project window to create a prefab. Then in our impale object we assign this new prefab and now we can just get rid of this. Check debug and click play. Awesome, I'm just going to lower its radius a bit. Best thing about this is that it is only one game object in your scene so it does not fill your hierarchy with a bunch of game objects and then it deletes itself. Alright, I'm going to assign it to my player controller here and test it out in third person. Now to implement it into your controller, we will need a reference to the impel object and then down in your update, you can just ignore this. I made this in like 5 minutes, it is not the best controller and I recommend you create your own but anyways, we get the input and in this case I'm just going to be using the mouse left click. Now we create an impel function and you don't have to do this bird's eye check. I'm doing it because I have three different game controllers in one script, but basically all you really need is this. You get the forward position of your player, then we create the impel object using this transform rotation. If you're making a top-down shooter though, then you can do a screen point to ray to get the mouse position in world space and calculate where the ability should go. If you're doing a first person or third person, then just ignore this. Cool, I'm going to add a few cubes with rigid bodies and gravity enabled, then test it out. It's actually working quite nicely, nice. I changed the colors of our impel object and impel hit effects so you can tell when I hit a cube. And that is it for this tutorial guys. You can customize it to look however you like. Here are a few examples. Go crazy with it, man. Please subscribe. I have another ability from Dota 2 queued up uh, to recreate in Unity, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye.